Welcome to Psydactic, Residency Edition. I am Dr. O, currently a second-year psychiatry resident. This episode is a quick take in a new intermittent series I'm calling In a Word. And in this series, I hope to dig down into some neuropsychiatric terms that we use every day, but maybe we don't really understand that well. You can find my references at the end of the show transcript at psydactic.com buzzsprout.com. The first word I'm taking on is perseveration. Autocorrect and predictive algorithms are likely to correct this word to preservation, but it means something very different. The reason I chose perseveration is because I see it written in psych notes by med students and residents frequently. For your Princess Bride fans out there, You keep using this word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Most often, I've written or seen it written in the mental status exam under the thought content or thought process section, which is reasonable. However, I find it most often used as a synonym for rumination or brooding when a patient continues to return to a subject of thought like how he's going to win back his ex-wife or what she did wrong in the meeting that makes everybody hate her. I also found in a 2021 paper in the Journal of Behavioral Medicine titled Worry and Rumination in Breast Cancer Patients, Perseveration Worsens Self-Rated Health. This paper explicitly uses perseveration as a synonym for worry and rumination. I'm going to propose that as psychiatrists, we should not use perseveration as a synonym for brooding or worry or rumination. We already have words for that, and since we're boarded by the same entity that boards neurologists, we should have a very precise and shared language. Perseveration is a neuropsychological phenomenon with proposed mechanisms, and for clear and effective communication and diagnosis, I think it deserves to be treated that way. But before I get there, I want to mention a couple other things, things other than rumination and brooding that perseveration is not. It is also not an obsession, nor a compulsion. Obsessions are repeated thoughts and compulsions are repeated actions, but as a psychiatrist, it would be as wrong to call a rumination an obsession as it is to call a compulsion a perseveration. If you're thinking, Dr. O, you keep telling me what perseveration is not, but you haven't told me what it is, then you're right. So let me share a few published definitions of perseveration I've come across without having to pay that $30 paywall fee to the knowledge keepers. The first is from a paper, Perseveration in Alzheimer's Disease by Pekala et al. from 2008 in the journal Dementia and Geriatric Cognitive Disorders. Perseveration is... Quote, any continuation or recurrence of an earlier verbal or nonverbal response without an appropriate intervening stimulus, unquote. This is admittedly very vague, so let me give you an example from another paper from Posen et al. in the Journal of Clinical and Experimental Neuropsychology from 2005, quote, In general, a perseveration is the inappropriate and unintentional persistence of a behavior. Wow. Not much less vague. So, knowing that perseveration is not rumination, and it's not an obsession or a compulsion, we can understand it as the name we give to some action or vocal expression, which at some point seemed to serve some purpose, but it's being repeated in a way that has become purposeless. This distinguishes it from other purposeless actions like ticks or chorea, which were always purposeless, or at least their purpose is only to relieve an urge and not to accomplish a task or respond to something. Papers dealing specifically with perseveration often point out that there are two competing ways of understanding it. There's the Sanson and Albert model and the Goldberg model. Per the Goldberg model, all perseveration is explained by the inability of the brain to switch from one task to another, 
And it's a failure of the executive system, which is primarily controlled by the frontal lobes. Per the Sanson and Albert model, perseveration can be the result of three different failures in the brain. They describe these failures as stuck in set, recurrent, or continuous. Someone with stuck in set perseveration is unable to effectively change the framework in which their brain is operating. This might be apparent if you ask someone to name vegetables and then ask them to name animals, but they continue to name vegetables. Set switching is thought to be an executive function of the frontal regions and their connections with the subcortical and mesolimbic system. Somehow, there's an impairment of the ability to change a response, such as a word, to fit this new category. Also, imagine someone is given a hammer and nails and is hammering nails, and then is presented with a screwdriver and a screw, but instead of twisting the screw, they use the screwdriver like a hammer. The next type of perseveration is recurrent perseveration, and is thought to be a dysfunction of the temporoparietal regions, and also memory dysfunction. It's called recurrent because it isn't a continuous or stuck-in-set action, but an action that occurs after some intervening period, despite having already occurred previously, and previously fulfilled some purpose. So I'm reminded of what frequently happens when I'm asking my patients to name words, all the words that they can think of that begin with the letter F, uh, which might look something like this. Fire, fork, freeze, fire, fun, freight, fire. In this example, the word fire is not repeated continuously, but recurs despite having already been stated and served the purpose of having been stated. Someone might perseverate also on their door being locked without it mounting to an obsession if they, for example, lock the door upon entering the house, then check the lock again after putting up their key, and then check the lock again after hanging up their jacket. If the action is automatic unintentional instead of driven by a compulsion, then it is recurrent perseveration. It's driven by the brain not having fully registered completion of the action and not on a feeling that it just needs to be done again. The last type of perseveration in the Sanson and Albert model is the continuous type, where an action or word is repeated without interruption, despite having fulfilled its original intent. These perseverations are thought to be related to dysfunction of the motor cortex and the basal ganglia, or some kind of communication between both these entities. It's like a loop that can't be turned off or interrupted. As it loops, it might also degenerate into an action or word that is somewhat similar to the first, but fragmented or partial. Some suggest that similar mechanisms are involved in phenomenon like echolalia, where people repeat back the last word you just said to them, or echopraxia, where they repeat back your actions. It may also be related to logoclonia, where patients repeat back the last syllable of a word, uh, similar to that goose in Charlotte's Web. I'm no flibberty eberty gibbet I hope this discussion of perseveration has left you with more than just, well, that Dr. O'Leary guy is kind of an a-hole. I'm not just trying to police your speech or what you write in your notes. I do think that it's important that our words have precise meanings when possible. I think it helps us to organize our thinking and also to communicate more efficiently. Next time you talk to your neurology colleagues and say something like, she is perseverating on her losses, you won't have to explain to them that she's not continuously looking into her purse for her cell phone, despite having already done that five times, but instead she's ruminating on how empty and alone she feels right now. Thank you for your time. I am Dr. O'Leary, and this has been an episode of Psydactic Residency Edition. Thank you.